Now for more on the summit, let's bring in Joshua Walker, Transatlantic Fellow with the German Marshall Fund. He joins us live from Astana, where the summit is taking place. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Now, what would you say are the main economic benefits for the countries participating in the Shanghai Corporation Organization? You know, I think the main benefit thus far has been really the One Belt, One Road initiative of the Chinese. It's really about Chinese investment. China is the biggest market, making it easier for these countries to trade. Um, it's still not as cohesive a unit as the European Union or maybe even the Eurasian Union. That's something that I think is evolving as it becomes more and more clear that the economic benefits are why countries like India and Pakistan are wanting to become part of this. So how would you say the SEO and the Belt and Road Initiative really complement each other? Well, I think in some ways the Belt Road Initiative kind of connects everything from Europe all the way to China, and the SCO is kind of a, a higher level of cooperation. It began as more of a, a regional discussion and kind of figuring out how to fight terrorism. It was more on the security front. So I think in some ways the One Belt, One Road is the larger initiative, the platform. SCO is a deeper way of cooperating and having a mechanism to cooperate between these different parties. Now let's look at some of the new members. We saw that uh, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that just the other day, SEO membership will really help India's economy. What are some of the ways? You know, I think for a country like India that's growing at such a fast rate, the idea of being able to be connected to its region, a lot of the countries in this region are so connected to the West and economically, they're not really interconnected regionally. This will really help those smaller areas. It's one thing for the capital cities, for the cities along the coast, but for a lot of these uh, uh, kind of regional areas and provinces, even in China uh, to the West, this will really help those regions be interconnected with the rail uh, links, with the other cooperation that they can have from a regional perspective. So let's talk some of the specific industries in the region. Which ones do you think will see the biggest benefits from SCO membership? I think basically the infrastructure organizations, the construction, the transportation, the logistical hubs, and the financial ones. Now, as I've already said, SCO has a long way to go. This is not something that overnight is going to transform from security cooperation into an economic one. But economics tends to be the driving force, particularly in this region of the world. And so I think those industries that I've highlighted are the natural ones that will continue to be connected. Because many of the other industries are already globally connected. These are the ones that are still waiting to be connected regionally. And to your point about the dynamics of this meeting, we saw that um, Russia's President Vladimir Putin called for the coordination of multi-partner economic projects during the SCO. So is this really becoming more as much of an economic meeting as it is strategic cooperation? You know, I think given what's going on in the world right now and in the region, it's hard not to talk about uh, terrorism and security. That's always going to be the high politics. And you have, anytime you have presidents coming together, that is going to be their top priority, security, keeping their people safe. But I think you're right to highlight that the countries that are here, the driving forces, whether it's China or India, are going to continue to focus on the economic side of things. And I think from an economic point of view and from a global business point of view, we have to pay more attention, particularly those of us in the West that are not as familiar with this region of the world. Now, we did see some tension ongoing between uh, India and Pakistan during the SCO. What do you think could some of the potential challenges be in trying to get all these countries on the same page so that they achieve these regional goals? Yeah, I think you're 100% right. It's easy when you have two large powers like Russia and China, and then you have other countries in the region. When you start including countries like India and Pakistan that have such a long historic rivalry, even last night watching these two leaders interact with the other world leaders, it was fascinating to observe where people were seated and kind of what protocol has to be followed. So the more and the larger you make an organization, the more difficult it becomes to have unanimity, the more difficult it becomes to have any type of cooperative uh, area. So the question is, will this help bring India and, and Pakistan closer together, and even India and China that sometimes have tensions. I think that by having a normalized routine of having conversations on these economic and security areas, it will help, but it's going to take time. And do you think there's a possibility that some of the geopolitical tensions will perhaps end up spilling into some of the economic goals that the SEO could also achieve? I think, unfortunately, that's always the case. Uh, you know, in some ways, the politics and the, the security concerns will always spill over. As much as you try to separate these things, as, as much as you try to take the, uh, the Syrian peace process and keep it outside of the conversation, it's always going to find its way back in because it directly affects the economy and the stability uh, is what affects a lot of these markets. And so it is definitely going to be spilling over. Well, I'm sure a lot of people will be watching to see who joins next. Thank you so much, Joshua Walker, Transatlantic Fellow at the German Marshall Fund.